I'm Mr. Nuremberg. I will be your substitute teacher for today. Please open up your math books to page 287 and a half. And we're going to have lots of fun. It was the last day of school in the Shiva Katana Hagadol. Class hours. There's 37 examples on the left side of the page and 49 examples on the right side of the page. Pick your favorite 250 of them. Make sure that everybody takes out their pens and papers and pencils. And As usual, pencils David Pfefferkorn couldn't pay attention, so he started talking to his friend, Chaim Sternstein. Chaim, can you believe school's finally almost over? Oh, but I can't believe they gave us a substitute on the last day! Paper with no crayons! I get really upset when people do their work with crayons because it always comes out too colorful. And that's why I went to Where are you going to camp this year? My parents don't know where to send me yet. Okay, can I, um, you think I could go to camp with, um, with you? Maybe you could come to my, can we go to camp together? I don't want to go to camp all by myself. Camp with you? That'd be geschmack. More homework over the summer. Please take out your math books, your reading books, your science books, your social studies books, and your spelling books, and we're going to do six pages from each book and do your work. And I'll ask my parents to call your parents, and then they can ask your parents if my parents could go with you. I mean, if you, if you could come to camp with me. And make sure that you have a Sharpen pencil, and if you don't have a sharpened pencil, go and sharpen one. And if you don't have a pencil at all, then borrow from someone who has a pencil that's not sharpened and sharpen it. But if he has a sharpened pencil, then sharpen it. No, then don't sharpen it. If he doesn't have a sharpened pencil, then take a non-sharpened pencil and sharpen it. A few anxious weeks later... All aboard the campus, I'm your driver, Comrade Kapusta Kartoshka. So what's the name of the camp we're going to? My parents didn't even tell me the name of the camp. They wanted it to be a surprise. I don't like surprises. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Okay. A few hours into the trip, Chaim asked, Why are all the kids so quiet? This is the quietest bus I've ever been on. It makes me nervous. Oh, don't worry. They're probably all just hypnotized by the evil mad scientist that runs the camp. Oh, no, I knew it. I knew it. I'm, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just joking, Chaim. Calm down. What do you do that for? You shouldn't fool people like that. It's Gnavis Das. Gnavis what? Gnavis does. It's when it makes someone believe something that's not true. It's like you're uh, stealing their trust. That's why it's called Gneva. Fine, I'm sorry. I'll try not to do it again. If you'll promise to stop acting like a baby just because the bus is a little quiet. But no one's saying a word, except for those kids over there saying to Hillam. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. I'll ask the bus driver what's going on if it makes you feel better. David and Chaim walk up to the bus driver. Uh, bus driver, is there any special reason those kids in the back have been saying to Hillam for the last two hours? Your driving isn't that bad. Well, of course they're saying to Hillam. Don't you know where we're headed? <laughs> what do you mean by that? What did he mean by that? Chaim, he's just trying to scare you by making you think there's something bad about the camp when there isn't. What did you call it? Your name is Das? Yeah, that's exactly what he's trying to do. You don't scare me, Mr. Bus Driver! Not even with the way you exceeded the legal speed limit by two miles an hour or four separate times on this highway! I'm not scared at all! Hey, it looks like one of those kids from the back is coming over to speak with us. See? I told you they knew how to talk. Uh, we were wondering, would you two like to join our Tehillim Chabura? Before it's too late? <laughs> Chaim, calm, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Well, we're here, and here's the camp director to greet you. <laughs> David, I'm scared. <laughs> Chaim, you're always scared. Relax for once in your life. It's summer camp. How bad could it be? Welcome to camp school. Camp what? Camp school. The camp that brings all the excitement of school to your summer vacation. My name is Mr. Nurburg. I see some of you are looking at me and other members of the staff as if you've seen our faces before, but can't remember quite where. Isn't that our substitute from the last day of school? <laughs> That's because camp school is entirely staffed by substitute teachers from across the state for your educational pleasure. If all campers would please exit the bus and line up next to the custodian's office, we're going to be having our first fun activity of the summer. Please take a number two pencil and a workbook. It's math day! Oh.
After a long day of doing math problems and writing spelling sentences, the campers lined up at the school's lunchroom. Well, campers, now that you've eaten your lovely school cafeteria lunch and bench, it's time to sing the camp school spirit song. Okay, camp school counselors, let's get ready to sing the camp school spirit song. We'll show them how it's done. If you want to camp with gum and all its drinking fountains, hop on the bus and join us at camp school. Nestled in the lovely scenic Picanos Mountains, classroom excitement is our golden rule. Hours of homework every day, with no recess to get in the way. Fun, fun workbooks on our shelves. How do we contain ourselves? If you don't like the schmooze at one, our detention can't be beat. Camp school is just so much fun. We're on the edge of our classroom seats. Now it's your turn, kids. If you want a camp of gum and always drink in fountains, hop on the bus and join us at camp school. Nestled in the lovely scenic pick a nose mountains. Classroom excitement is our golden rule. Hours of homework every day. We know we can get in our way. Fun, fun, work, 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 If you don't like the truth of that one, our detention can't be beat. Camp school is so much fun. We're on the edge of our classroom Oh, that didn't sound a little bit at all. I think I know what the problem is. It's written all over your faces. You're not singing it fast enough. We need to sing it at least ten times faster. Let's hear it. If you want to get with the other guys, you're going to get down. You're going to get down. You're going to get down. That night in the bunk. David Chaim, and everyone else for that matter, were busy trying to find a bed farthest away from the incredibly loud school bell that would wake them up at promptly 5.30 the next morning. Chaim, have you found a bed yet? Yeah, I'm on the top bunk. Hi, I'm Mati. What are your names? I'm David, and this is Chaim. Who, who's that older kid sitting in the corner over there? That's Gershon. He's been sent here to camp school for three years in a row. He's what we call a lifer. He'll probably be here forever, or at least until he gets into Yeshiva Gedola. Oh, he's coming over here to find out who you two are. Don't get him mad, he's always in a bad mood. Hey, that's Lashon Hara! No, it's not, it's true! Hey, that doesn't matter. It's still Lashon Hara, even if it's true! A new boy suddenly introduced himself. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Schmelke Sinatrowitz, and it's such a pleasure to be here. It is? Stop spreading the news. I'm quitting today Don't want to be a part of it Lashon Hara It's just a feeling So watch what you say Don't want to be the Kabbalist That's Avacha If it's a bad You've got bad things to say Some people make an art of it But the Torah Said if it's about a Jew Then even if it's true Don't listen to the Shon Hara Well, Gershon, you sing pretty well, said Mati. Thanks. Hey, that's Lozanara. No, it's no, not. It's not. Oh. oh, yeah. So, Mati, aren't you going to introduce me to these two new guys? Said Gershon. As you two probably already know, my name's Gershon. You know, the one who's always in a bad mood. What are your names? David. Chaim, and please don't hurt me. So what's your story? What do you mean? Said David. How did you two get yourself sent here? Everyone has a story. My parents worked so hard to try to give me everything that they didn't have. This is the only camp that they can afford. It would break their heart to know how much I hated here. So I have to grin and bear it. That's why I'm here. My parents sent in the wrong application form. Hey, so did mine. I set fire to the garage. 
Hey, how many other people were sent here as a punishment? Me! Right, right here. here. Stop it, this camp is getting worse than I thought, said Chaim. How are we going to survive eight weeks of this? It's your fault. It's your parents that sent us to this place. There's only one thing to do. We'll have to escape. You mean run away? To where? To civilization. You mean New York? Tomorrow we're going on a major field trip. It's the perfect opportunity to make a break for it. Mati, are you with us? I guess so. Next morning, Kain felt a very strange sensation in his legs. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I think my legs are being electrocuted. They keep shaking like lightning is going through them. What? Wait a minute. You're not being electrocuted, Chaim. Your feet are pushed up against the metal school bell, and it's trying to ring. I told you to get a bed farther away from it. Oh, I'll take my feet off it and let it ring. Wait a minute, Chaim. Don't! The camp bus turned out to be one of the most interesting vehicles anyone had ever seen. Everybody aboard! Oh no, it's him again! Said Chaim. <laughs> Wait while I just get my bus started. <laughs> Dovin asked. What year is this car? It's a 99. This is a 1999? No, what do you think? A bit of money? It's 1899. So where are we going for this field trip anyway, Dovin? Asked Chaim. They said it's a surprise. I don't like surprises! Well, kids, we're pulling in now! Alright, let's get off the bus! It's a field trip. How bad could it be? Welcome to the dirt factory! Everyone, come in! I'll try to keep the place clean. Once they entered the dirt factory, the manager, CEO, and only employee was happy to show them around. Everyone, keep to the right! Hey, don't touch that kid! What is it? It's dirt! What do you think it is? This is a dirt factory! Uh, Mr. Mudman! Maybe you could tell the kids something educational and fun about the factory, said the camp director. For example, what exactly do you do here? Rebino shall I um How many times do I have to repeat myself? We make dirt. It's a dirt factory. Soon the kids and the camp director were having a fascinating time discovering exciting new facts about the dirt factory. Don't you make anything else here besides dirt? Asked Monty. Yeah, for an extra five bucks, we add water and turn it into mud. Now we're approaching the fun part of our tour. Free samples. Follow me into the sample room. Now everyone can take two scoops from any pile of specialty dirt they want, but not from that huge, gigantic, three-story, towering pile of compost over there. It's very expensive and very unstable. Also, it's all balanced on one bowling ball. Oh, you mean this one? Uh-oh! Everyone run for it! It's an avalanche! It's coming for us all! It's an avalanche of dirt! Soon the dirt avalanche grew bigger and faster. Everyone run for your lives! Oh, the humanity. As everyone else ran for their lives, David, Chaim, and Mati got split off from the rest of the group. Hey, David! Said Chaim. Where was everyone else? I don't know, but now's a great chance to make a break for it. Let's run away. But we're already running away! No, from camp! But where are we gonna run away to? Said Monty. Anywhere but here! Look, here's the back door of the dirt factory. Let's head up these hills. Meanwhile, back at the dirt factory... Well, kids, we appear to be trapped in the mud room by a giant wall of dirt and leaves. Uh, oh, no. No. And it's crawling with worms! Oh, really? There's just too much dirt to push it out of the way! It's compost. There's only one thing to do, kids. Dial Hatsala. Oh, uh, does anybody know Hatsala's phone number? Hey, why don't you just call for information? Welcome to Shiraim, local and national, long distance. Hello, can I help you? I need the number for Hatsala. I'll transfer you to information. Please hold. Hello, Shariam Long Distance. You reached the Rebbe. What can I do for you? I need the number for Atsala. Um, is that Muncie or Lakewood? We're in the Pignanose Mountains. Hold on, let me look that up for you. Uh, where's my phone book? Esty! While we're waiting for the Rebbe to get that number, let's sing the Camp School Spirit Song another 200 times. Meanwhile, 
Chaim Dub and Mati were quickly getting lost. Chaim said, I can't even see the dirt factory anymore. Where are we going? Keep going up these hills, said David. It's getting windy and it's getting dark. I'm cold, said Mati. Look, there's a cave. Let's go in. They walked nervously into the cave, hoping to find refuge. The cave was very dark and seemed to go on forever. Whoa, it's dark here. Oh, here's the light switch. And here's the switch to show the echo off. Hey, said David. Why is there a kitchen and a living room in the middle of a cave? And look at all those shtenders, said Mati. This part looks like a shtibel. Mati was right. With its shelves of swarm, piles of sudurm, and the Ani standing in the back of the room, Stuka! Stuka! Did indeed look and sound like a shtibel. <clears throat> By the way, has anyone listening not daven yet? Uh, I, I kind of need a minion. See, I usually catch the early minion at Shema Shabbos, and uh, today, uh, you know, well. Anyway, the boys continued exploring the cave. David said, Who would live in a cave? People have lived in caves throughout Jewish history, said Chaim. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son lived in a cave for 13 years. Besides them. The Rambam lived in a cave when his life was in danger, said Mati. David HaMelech hid in a cave when he was running away from Shaul. All right. And the family lives in a cave. Enough! I'm tired. Let's sit down on this couch. Mati said, Hey, there's some porridge over here. I'm hungry. Put that down, said David. It's not ours. That would be Geneva. Besides, it might be Chadash. Chaim said, Hey, someone's coming! Quick, hide! The three boys attempted to hide behind the stenders as an old man, dressed all in black, slowly entered the room. Hmm, someone's been walking through my cave! Hmm, someone's been sitting on my couch, too! Hmm, someone's been questioning the kashris of my porridge! And they didn't trust it? Of course it's kosher! You might as well stop trying to hide behind those stenders! You're not that skinny! You let me introduce myself. They call me the Farina Rebbe. But you can call me Rebbe Yankel Mendel Frankel Berger Steiner with Yisrael Levy a calling Schlichter for short. Shalom Aleichem Rebbe. They all said as they stood up to greet the Rebbe. My name is David and this is Chaim and this is Mati. We're pleased to meet the Rebbe. I'm glad you're here, said the Rebbe. You're right on time for Mincha. The island should be coming soon. Uh, I promise you a minion, my Shkia. Wait, uh, I was going to do something. What was that? Uh, oh yes, I needed to find my phone book to answer that fellow. What number did he want again? Oh, running a phone company and being a rep is so difficult. So what brings you to these parts? Yes, the Rebbe. David said. Uh, well, we were on our camp school major trip to the dirt factory, but we ran away. What'd you do that for? We don't like it there, said Chaim. At the dirt factory or a camp? Neither. Hmm, said the Rebbe. Well, uh, hmm, the dirt factory, eh? That reminds me, let me tell you a story about dirt. A story about what? Said Mati. About dirt, said the Rebbe. Maybe my story will teach you to make the best out of the situation. You should try to look at things in a more positive light. Meanwhile, back at the dirt factory, well, campers, it's a good thing that the camp school cafeteria packed us these delicious special lunches. Who wants a peanut butter, lettuce, and tomato sandwich? Hey, look, the worms are running away. While we're waiting for someone to save us, why don't I tell you a story? Uh, why did I want to hear this? This is a story from the Gemara in Tainus. There was once a Tana <laughs> named Nachem Ishkamzu. He was one of Rabbi Akiva's Rebbe's. He was called Ish Gamzu because every time something happened to him, he would say Gamzu Latoiva. This is also for the best. Why wasn't he called Nachem Ish Gamzu Latoiva then? Asked Chaim. Good point, said the Rebbe. Rabbeinu Hanan will ask the same question. He points out that Nachem Ish Gamzu was also from a town called Gimzu. So they just shortened his name to Gamzu. Kind of like I shortened my name to Rebbe Yaakov Mendel Frankelberger Steiner with the Sir Livia Cohen Schlitter. Uh, Rebbe? Yeah? Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm having a hard time understanding the Rebbe's voice, said David. Could we have someone else tell the story? Uh, well, I guess if you insist. Meanwhile, back at the dirt factory... Okay, whatever you say, campers. We'll get someone else to tell the story. I have no problem stepping outside and letting someone else tell it. But I always thought my voice was very clear. Loud and clear! Can we just get on with the story already? <clears throat> Maybe I'll take over. Mind if I cut in? This is a story from the Gemara in Sanhedrin. 
There was once a Tana named Nachem Ishgamzu. He was called Ishgamzu because every time something happened to him, he would say Gamzu Latoiva. They already know that! <clears throat> many, many years ago, in the times of the second base of Mikdash, the Jewish community needed a very righteous person for a very important mission to take a tribute to Caesar in Rome. He went through the entire Jewish phone book looking for a Jew for whom Hashem performed open miracles on a regular basis. Only such a person would be worthy of this task. This is tough. We haven't found anybody and we're already in disease. Keep going. There has to be someone. Bronx Zoo, San Diego Zoo, St. Louis Zoo, Matsu Zoo, Zoo Litova, Gam, 613, Easter Hashem, Nachem Ish Gamzu. Hey, Nachem Ish Gamzu. Yeah, he's perfect for the job. Hashem does miracles from all the time. Let's send Shluchim to him right away. He's in the base midras across the street. Why don't we just go ourselves? No, we're sending Shluchim. But isn't it better to do a mitzvah personally rather than through a shliach? Fine, but we're appointing ourselves as Shluchim. Whatever. As they approached the base midras, they saw nothing, learning very intently. Oh no, I just spilled some ink on my papers. Oh well, Gamzulatova. Oh, Nachem, you're always saying that. Well, it's true in Hashem's world, everything that happens is for the best. Hey, who are those people with trumpets? Nachmanish Gamzu! That's me. There's some very important Tzachet Tzibor to be done, and we are asking you to be the Shaliach. They proceeded to explain to Reb Nachum about the need to send a tribute to the Caesar. As long as he was kept happy, he wouldn't bother the Jews of his empire. We were hoping that you would agree to deliver this chest of precious stones and pearls. It doesn't say anything about stones and pearls in Sanhedrin. That's the garrison from Tynus. <coughs> uh, can we get on with the story, please? Sorry, just trying to help. <coughs> precious stones and pearls to the Roman Empire. We have a request to ask of him on behalf of all the Jewish people. Why me? Because you are known as a man to whom Nizim regularly occur, and this is a mission of critical importance. You are the sole man for the job. So Nachum Ish Gamzu took the chest of jewels and started on his way. <laughs> <laughs> After a long journey by land and by sea, Nachum finally arrived at an inn. <coughs> it was late at night. How convenient that this inn should be placed before me exactly at the time that I need it. I think I'll spend the night. Hmm, Hotel Cauliflower. Interesting name. I wonder if you can check in any time you like. I'll ask the innkeeper. The innkeeper proved to be a very accommodating host. Have I got the perfect room for you? It's a bit old, but it's barely been used by a little old lady on her way from Greece to Rome. Twice a month, and it gets great mileage. The room gets great mileage? Sorry, I used to be a youth chariot salesman. I suppose you won't eat with us, but the trade buffet is at 8 o'clock featuring shrimp souffle and lobster stuffed with pork. No thank you. Make yourself at home. Please feel free to deposit any of your valuables in my bank account. Uh, I mean safe. They will be <coughs> safe from the other, th uh, I mean from the thieves. That's what I meant. I think I'll pass on that as well. I need to get some sleep. I have a big day ahead of me tomorrow and I can't keep the Caesar waiting. Caesar! 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 One of the criminals in the background asked Nachum, Caesar, why do you want to see Caesar? I'm bringing him certain things. He thinks this is Caesar. Caesar? He's Caesar. Hey, he's bringing things to Caesar. Did you hear that, Felonius? The Jews bringing things to Caesar. Of course I heard that. I said it. I wonder what kind of things. I wonder what he's got in that chest. Let's find out after he goes to sleep. After Mayrev and Mishmar, Nachum Ishgamzu tied the chest of jewels closed and went to bed. Soon he was sound asleep, but nearby, other people were wide awake. The Jews are asleep. Now is the chance to sneak into his room and find out what's in that chest he's guarding so much. I'll bet it's some part of ice cream. Most Jews should know how to make part of ice cream. I'll bet they're sending Caesar some. I can't wait to try it. If Alonius passed the knife, we need to cut the ropes. It's 12 o'clock, partner. What if he wakes up for Tikkun Chatzot? What are you talking about, Felonius? They don't have that in the Nusach yet. Never mind about the knife. Let's just untie the ropes, then we can retie them later, like nothing ever happened. The thieves soon untied the ropes. Hey, looky here. There's precious stones and pearls. 
but no part of ice cream. Oh. Oh, well, like that Jew's always saying, come to the toiva. After stealing the precious stones and pearls, the two thieves filled the chest with dirt and retied the ropes just as they had been before. Rephalonius, where did you get the dirt from? From the rubble in the room that the health inspector closed down. Good move. Good way to clean the floor. After davening Masikin the next morning, Nachum Ish Gamzu arrived at Caesar's palace with his heavy chest just in time for the fourth hour of the day when the Gemara in Brachos says that kings customarily arise from their bed. Hello? Is this Caesar's palace? I've come with a chest full of valuables. Oh, most people just bring cash. Right this way to offer a bribe. Walk this way. Walk this way. He was quickly shown into Caesar's throne room and introduced to Caesar. Greetings, Your Excellency. On behalf of the Jewish people, I bring you a small token of our appreciation. And by small, I mean large. Great! I'll be with you after I finish up with my morning barbecue buffet and wine tasting. You wouldn't believe how well they made the Caesar salad today. Or, as I like to call it, meat salad! <laughs> Nakami Shkanzu chuckled politely so as not to offend the Caesar. So, let's see this treasure. Streptococcus! Bacillus! Yes, Your Excellency, we're here. Bring the chest here and open it. They quickly opened the chest according to his wishes. <laughs> Streptococcus, what's in it? It's dirt! Without pausing a beat, Nachum Ish Gamzu said, Gamzu Lataiva. What? What did you just say? I said Gamzu Lataiva. Nachum Ish Gamzu, with his immense bitachon and amuna in Hashem, knew that whatever situation he was in was the right situation for him at that exact moment in time. Now, mister, said Caesar, I don't care if that dirt is Gamzu Lataiva dirt, whatever that is. You promised me a large bribe. I, I, I mean a gift. The Jews must be mocking me. They deserve a firm but fair punishment. I say, kill them all! There were whispers around. Kill them all, kill them all, kill them all, kill them all, kill them all. Kill them all. Even the doctors? That's right. Now bring me some more of that meat salad. I'm hungry. If you don't bring it in now, I'm going to cry. And you don't want to make Caesar cry. We are making it right now. The you salad will be ready soon. You're making Caesar cry! Hurry in the kitchen! Can't you see he's crying? Si, sí, senor. Eh, what are you gonna do now, Nachamish Gamzulatova? Due to your dirt, you're destined to die. That was very good alliteration, Mr. Streptococcus. Thanks. But I'm not worried at all. I know that even this is exactly what Hashem wants to happen right now, and it will also work out for the best. Nachamish Gamzu was not worried. None of this was his fault, so he knew Hashem was doing this for good reasons, and that everything was playing out exactly as it should. In fact, just then, Caesar said, I need my special advisor on Jewish matters, penicillin. Come here immediately. What do you think is the best way to kill all the Jews? Painfully or really painfully? A very old man dressed in Roman garb stepped forward from behind the crowd. Little did Caesar know, he was really Eliyahu Anovi planted in Caesar's court by Hashem from the beginning to ensure the success of Nachum Ish Gamzu's mission. Sire, before you consider killing all of the Jews, something has just occurred to me. Perhaps this dirt is the dirt of their forefather, Abraham, which was used during the wars against the four kings. When Abraham would throw the dirt at his enemies, it turned into swords, and the straw that he threw turned into arrows. As it says in Yeshaya, he made his swords like dirt, his bows like wind-blown straw. Oh, really? said Caesar. Well, in that case, let's take some of this dirt and try it out. I always liked fighting dirty. <laughs> Fine. Let's use it against that territory we could never conquer before, because it's filled with heavily armed people, even the women and children. What was it called again? Oh yeah, Texas. Streptococcus, Bacillus, sent out this dirt to all military units in the area and start a war immediately. A shame made a nice. The dirt worked exactly as Elio and Nubby had described, and the land was captured in one day. Caesar immediately cancelled his order to kill the Jews, and instead, he opened up his treasure vault and ushered Nachum Ish Gamzu inside. Well, Nachum Ish Gamzu, it looks like you've hit the jackpot over here at Caesar's palace.
Take as much as you want from my treasures as will fit in your trunk. You've earned it. You're going to leave here a very rich man. Hmm. There's no reason to take this diamond-studded toaster oven. I think I'll just take these golden coins. So Nachem Ish Gamzu filled his chest with gold to return to the Tzibur. Maseches Tainus says it was precious stones and pearls. Can I finish the story? Sorry. Can I finish a story? Can I finish Sorry. a story? Thank you. Sorry about that. Anyway, Caesar was appeased and Nachem Ish Gamzu left Caesar's palace a rich man. Sent off with great honor. It was a tremendous Kiddush Hashem. Although Reb Nachum was happy about his success, he was also happy that the whole episode was over and he could return home and to his base medrash. On his way back, he found himself in the same inn he had stayed by on his way there. <coughs> hmm, the last ship of the day has left already. Gamzu Lataiva, I guess I'll have to find an inn. Hey look, that's the inn which I stayed in the last time. It is late and they have vacancies. And it might be Bittle Tyra to go find another hotel. I don't see any others around anyway, so I'll stay there. This time I'll just stay up all night learning and keep an eye on the gelt. As Nachum entered the inn, he was immediately noticed by the dishonest staff and suspicious customers at the bar. They were very surprised to see him. Hey, that's the guy we stole the loot from. Didn't he bring that dirt to Caesar? Why is he still alive? Yeah, we want the dirt on what happened, so to speak. Let's go ask him. All of the people in the inn surrounded Nachum with a barrage of questions. So, uh, how did your meeting go? My meeting went better than expected. Hashem did great miracles for me and I was very successful. The innkeeper asked, What's in the trunk? The emperor rewarded me. Say, what did you uh, bring to Caesar anyway? Other precious stones and pearls? Ow. Polonius gave his friend a whack for the question that might give them away. Um, uh, perhaps some schnapps and locks and bagels are... Yeah. Whatever I took with me from here is what I gave to the Caesar. What? What? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to my room to learn Tyra all night long. Also, I'm catching the first trip in the morning back to Eritus Roll. He put a coin down on the innkeeper's desk and carried his trunk and bags to his room. He only had to pay one coin for his room? It's gold. Who are you? I'm Streptococcus. I'm here to assure Rabbi Gamzu's safety on his way back to Eritus Roll. The innkeeper, Felonius, and that weird Italian guy in the background began to talk as soon as Nachamish Gamzu and Streptococcus left. Did you hear that? He gave Caesar only what we gave him. Dirt. And look what he got in exchange. Gold. All this time I've been sitting on a gold mine. I mean a dirt mine. I mean whatever I mean. Let's get the pickaxes and the wrecking balls, tear down this inn from top to bottom, and turn it into a dirt factory. First thing in the morning. The innkeeper got on the loudspeaker and made an announcement. Attention all residents of Hotel Cauliflower, we are closing down permanently tomorrow. You can check out any time you like, but you've got to leave by 10 a.m. The next morning, Reb Nachum boarded his ship to Eretz Yisrael. As soon as he left, all the residents in the inn began to reduce the building to mere rubble. After the demolition was complete, all the residents of the inn began to carry bags and cartloads of dirt to Caesar's palace. They arrived at the entrance and began to knock on the doors of the palace. Felonius, I think the guard is coming. See the palace? Please hold. Hold, but we're right here. Thank you for holding. How can I help you? We have arrived to bring a great tribute of unparalleled value and unmatched importance to express our undying admiration and adulation of His Royal Highness, Emperor Caesar. May he reign a thousand years. Oh, another bribe. Yes, up that way, stay to the right, first room on your left, past the janitor's closet. And try to keep the place clean. Oh, he thinks it's a bribe. I can't wait to deliver the dirt. We'll be rich. What do you think you'll let us take from his treasure room? Maybe some pot of ice cream. Ow! With all the money we'll make from this, we'll be rich beyond our wildest dreams. I can't figure out which idea was more brilliant. Reducing my into rubble or sending all the rubble to the most powerful dictator on earth as a present. When they arrived in the throne room, they showed Caesar their loads of rubble. Do you remember the rubble that Nachamish Gamzu gave you? That was the remains of our residence. We don't exactly know what it did or how it worked, but we know that whatever it was, it was worth your highness's time and effort to send him off with great wealth. I mean, uh, gratitude. Do you have any butter of ice cream? Ow! Be quiet. 
Caesar this. What's in those bags and cartloads? It's dirt. Oh, great. We can try it on a new province that's been giving me trouble recently. Yugoslavia. That whole place is just falling apart. They tried the dirt in their battles. All the Roman soldiers ended up with was mud on their face. The next day, Caesar called in the residents of the inn and his messenger to hear news of the battle. Uh, 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 Caesar, it was uh, just uh, dirt. Uh, no swords, no arrows. Well, maybe it was just a different type of dirt that turns into more dirt and buries the enemies with the dirt. Uh, no, we just ended up with dirt on our faces. So the innkeeper, Felonius, that strange Italian guy, and all the other residents of the inn were taken out to be executed. You're making Caesar cry! You're making Caesar cry! Oh no, with all these executions, I'm gonna have to miss my buffet! Oh well, come to Litova, bring me some more meat salad! Back in Eretz Yisrael, Nochem Ish Gamzu returned safely to his home. He gave all the money to Tzedakah. Um, Mr. Narrator, are you finished with the story yet? Asked the Rebbe. Yeah, you can take over now. Oh, good, said the Rebbe. So, boys, even though your camp might be horribly boring, you still have to make the most of it. Because you have to realize, everything is Gamzula Toiva. Every situation is always the right thing that's supposed to happen to you. The only question is whether you see it or not. For some reason, Hashem wants you to be in this camp right now, and it's your job to find out why. Because that's how we grow as Jews. Uh, by the way, where is the rest of your camp group anyway? We don't know what happened to them, said Chaim. We just left when there was a giant avalanche at the dirt factory, and we got separated from them and ran away. Oh, that phone call from the dirt factory, I forgot. Now I remember, they needed the phone number for Atzala. By Jewish standard time, it's never too late. It's time for another phone company to save the day. Rabbi Uncle Mendel, Frankel Berger Steinowitz, Israel Levia Koenschlitter, grabbed the phone and phone book. Uh, hello, are you still there? Oh, uh, yeah. You have the number for me? Yeah, but before I give it, please Michael me for the long wait. Oh, don't worry. I'll entertain the children with a fabulous story from the Gemara in Sanhedrin. It's Tynus. Rabbi Uncle Mendel, Frankel Berger Steinowitz, Israel Levia Koenschlitter, gave the camp director the phone number to Atzala. And thanks for using local and national Shirayim long distance. Suddenly, Mati said, Thanks, Rebbe. You sure taught us a lot. We don't want to go back to camp. Can we stay here and be your Hasidim? I told you the story for a reason. You must return to where you belong and find out why Hashem put you there. And right now, the place where you belong is... Dirt School! But before you go, I'm going to give you this book here as a parting gift. It has many great stories, including the one I just told you about, Nochem Ishkamzu. When you find that camp school is beginning to drive you to just open it up and read another story to each other. It'll be as if my voice is reading it to you. Well, not exactly my voice, but maybe the narrator's voice. Wait a minute. You better pay me extra for that. Thanks for the cipher, Rebbe, but how do we get back? Chaim said nervously. You don't realize, but you've been running in circles ever since you've left the dirt factory. The back door of the dirt factory is just down the hill. Hurry up! Hatzal is about to arrive, and you'll notice you're separated from the group if they haven't already. But if you hurry, you might be able to slip back without them realizing it. For now, call Tuv. See you later. The boys thank for Bianco Mendel Franco. You get the idea. The boys returned to the mud factory. That's dirt! <clears throat> the boys slipped back into the dirt factory and found the rest of their group still trapped, waiting for Hatzal to come and rescue them. Chaim, Monty, I hear the others. Look through that hole in the wall. They're trapped over there in that room filled with mud. David, Chaim, Monty, where have you been? We were so worried about you. You thought you were buried in that dirt. It's compost! It's compost! It's compost! Five hours later... Oh, Baruch Hashem, after five hours of digging, looks like you guys are free to go. I've never had a call like this before. Chas Shalom, I should get another one. Ugh, there's a worm in my shoe. Isn't that felonious? Oh, thanks, that's all. Okay, kids, back to camp school. Say thank you to Mr. Mudman for that wonderful tour of the dirt factory. All right, so long, kids. Don't forget to stop at our lovely gift shop on your way out. 
We're having a special on pond scum. Back on the bus, the bus driver said, I hope you kids appreciate the luxury you have here in America. There is right now a dirt shortage back in Russia. Mati said, David, can I see that book that Rebienko, Mendel, Frankelberger, Steinowitz, Yisrael, Levi, Cohen, Schlitter gave us? Sure, hey, what do you think happened to Nachomish Gamza when he got back home? I don't know. Maybe it happened something like this. Nachamish Gamzu, with Hashem's help, you've done it once again. On behalf of the entire Jewish community, it gives me great pleasure to announce that all contributions are tax deductible. Oh, sorry, wrong speech. It gives me great pleasure to thank you publicly for your work and to announce that the hot new vocal group Hisbodedus has just written a song in honor of this miracle. Hit it, boys! Gamzu litaiva, 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 Gamzu litaiva. But what if my last pencil breaks? You'll learn to write without mistakes. But what if my car breaks down? You'll get exercise as you walk to town. Gamzu litaiva, 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 Gamzu litaiva. But what if my dishes break? You'll have a good time going out for steak. Gamzu litaiva, 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 gamzu litaiva. But what if I lose my job? Uh, what kind of job is it? I clean out chicken coops. Gamzu litaiva, 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 gamzu litaiva.